Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you the top 15 hidden option key tips for Mac OS X. So to begin with, you need to know where the option key is on the keyboard. I have a zoomed in version right over here. You can see the option key is between the control and the command key right over here. Now in the bigger keyboard diagram, you can see the option key exists on this side as well as on this side over here. So um, you can use either one, it's the same one. And all you do is you hold the option key and you get all these additional features that you normally don't get without holding it. So let's go through each of the tips and see what you can do. So for the first tip, you can hold the option key down when you restart and shut down your Mac, or if you empty the trash for faster uh, restart shutdowns and empty trash. Why? Because it won't come up with the dialog box when you hold the option key. So let's go into the Apple menu for a moment, and I'm going to hold the option key. If you notice on restart and shutdown, there were three dots next to restart and shutdown. You could see them now. When I hold the option key, they disappear. Those dots indicate that there's going to be a dialog box that's going to come up and ask you, do you want to restart? Do you want to shut down? The same thing happens for empty trash. If you select it with the option key uh, depressed, It'll simply empty the trash without asking you any questions. This can save a lot of time, especially if you want to shut down quickly at the end of the evening. Okay, so for number two, if you go under the Apple menu, you see about this Mac. If you hold the option key, you're going to see system information. So again, Apple, system information, or about this Mac. When I hold the option key, it changes to system information. This is good if you want to see how much RAM you have, what slots they're in. You'll see the difference. There are other ways of getting to this area, but this is about the quickest you can find it. So if you're ever looking for information about how your computer is set up, um, some of the serial number information or what it's running, this is where you can get it. So again, about this Mac is what you usually see, and then system information is what you also see if the option key is depressed. All right, let's go to tip number three, preview. So preview comes with uh, your Mac. It's uh, an application that is made by Apple. And if you double click on a, P on a PNG file or a JPEG, preview will almost always open. Uh, the way preview looks as far as an icon, it looks like this. You'll find it in your applications folder. Now, when you have preview opened and it has either a JPEG or a PNG, you can export this into a different file format. You would go to file and you would go to export. When you got into the export command, you would have these choices of which file formats you want to export. But check this out. When you hold the option key, you suddenly get a whole bunch more. Some of them being Photoshop, a GIF, a PostScript, uh, you know, the you already have the TIFF and the PDF, but you can see some of the other ones are pretty cool. Imagine just from holding the option key, you have all these additional capabilities. Who would have known? All right. That's tip number three. Let's go to number four, Wi-Fi. So if you click and hold uh, your Wi-Fi area, you're going to be able to select whatever Wi-Fi signals are in your area, as you could see. But if you hold the option key, you get this new area that's called Open Wireless Diagnostics. And when you open it up, if you actually go to the window key, don't hit continue, um, you have all these little options of uh, looking up things for your Wi-Fi network. The one I use it for is I usually select scan, and this tells me over here in the lower right corner, what are the best channels to be using on my Wi-Fi signal in the room. Once I know it's um, channel one or two or channel 40 or 44, I can then go to my router and adjust the channels that the Wi-Fi signal is submitting, and that would give me better Wi-Fi reception, especially in a, an apartment building or in a busy neighborhood where there's a lot of signals going on. Okay, so that's Wi-Fi. Uh, notifications uh, for number five is right up here. So as you can see, if you click on notifications, you can get all these notifications over here. Sometimes it has your mail in it. Sometimes it has notifications for Skype. Uh, but basically, you sometimes want them on and you sometimes want them off. For example, if you're doing a YouTube video, you may not want your notifications popping up while you're working. So if you hold the option key, it grays it out. And if you hold the option key again, it makes it live. So obviously that's grayed out, that's live. When it's grayed out, it won't have notifications showing for the time that you're using it. All right, number six, 
Safari. So Safari has quite a lot of little tips and tricks uh, that you can use the option key for. So let's open up Safari and let's open up three windows. I have a Google window here and an Apple window. All right, so I've got three uh, basic windows set up. Now, if I hold down the option key and I go into the window menu of Safari, there's this option to minimize all. If I don't hold the option key, I'm only going to get minimized, which is only going to do one window. But if I hold the option key, it'll minimize all of them. And then I can open it up again just to show you all three are there. They were just quickly minimized. So that can help if you're switching between applications, etc. Another option in here is Zoom All. So if I click Zoom All, it'll blow up all three uh, windows. As you can see, they're on top of each other, um, which isn't the best way to have it arranged, but it's all big and now zoomed in. If I hold the option key again when I have the window, I have an option to arrange in front. Without it, I just have bring all to front, but with the option key, arrange in front. So if you select that, it'll take all three windows that I zoomed in and give me this kind of domino effect over here, which is much easier to go through. So now I'm going to minimize all, okay, get them out of there, and see what other options we have. Well, in the Safari pull-down menu, if you hold the option key, you have this new option called Clear History and Keep Website Data. The Clear History is usually what you would normally do, but that will also delete all the website data. If you want to keep the website data, but you don't want to have the history in the pull-downs, this is something that you can do quite easily, all right? So as you can see, uh, that would normally be what you would get. All right. So we did minimize all, zoom all, arrange in front, quit and keep windows. So that's an interesting thing. Let's open up the all three that we had. So we had an Apple window, a Google window, and a text serve window. Okay. So we have all three uh, windows open, as you can see. Now, normally, when you go to Safari, if you quit Safari, you don't have this quit and keep windows, as you could see right here. Here's quit Safari, and here's quit and keep windows. Let's select that and see what happens. Okay, so I quit Safari, and I had three windows open. Now I'm going to reopen up Safari, and all three windows that I had should be there. So let's see if it does that. Here's window one, there's window two, and there is window three. So all three windows that I originally had open saved it into the memory, and when I reopened it later on, all those three windows reopened. It could be very helpful if uh, you want to quit out of the, uh, Safari and restart your computer the next morning and pick up where you left off. Pretty cool. In the File menu, you also have Close Other Tabs command. So let me show you what that means. If you have these three um, Safari windows open, and you go to the Window area, area, you can merge all the windows. That's not a feature of option, but you can merge them. This would bring all three windows into tabs, as you could see. Now, if I'm in the Apple window and I really don't want the others, I then can go over to the file menu and hold the option key, and I can select close all windows, close window, close other tabs. Okay, as you could see, that one is only coming up when I'm holding the option key. What that does is it keeps the main window and it gets rid of the other tabs and that actually closes it out. All right, so that's uh, Safari for you. There's one other Safari feature that's kind of cool. It's Command Option F. So let's say, for example, you're in this window and now you want to surf to go to another uh, area of the web. So if you do, um, what was that? Uh, command option F, command option F. It automatically picks uh, your web address, as you could see, and you could start typing apple.com. And let's say go there if that's where you want to. All right. So that's again command option and F for find. Okay. Well, that does it for Safari. Let's see what the next tip is, number seven. Option plus command and escape to force quit. So let's say you have a bunch of applications running and there's one application that stopped working and you need to force quit it. Holding the option command and the escape key brings up this window. And by selecting any of these, you can click force quit. 
really helpful. Um, I probably use that more than any of the others. Okay, so there's also another option that you can open dock items that are open up on the screen by holding the option key. So uh, these top hidden uh, 15 hidden tips I've wrote in uh, stickies, and I'm going to hold the option key and click on stickies. Now, as you could see, it closed it, but it did. It just collapsed it. If I hit the option key again, it pops right back up. So I didn't really lose it. I just collapsed it. And that could be very helpful. So opening and closing it just simply by clicking on anything in the dock and holding the option key will bring it open and closed. All right. So the scroll bars are uh, right um, on, and nested folders you can also uh, use with the option key. Let me show you what I mean. So here, for example, is my applications folder. If I open up the Adobe folder, you'll notice that there's uh, additional folders here, but maybe I'm looking for something in one of the folders and I can't find it. If I hit the option key when I'm opening the folder, I now have all the folders and the subfolders opening. And it does take a little bit of time. As you can see, there's about a thousand items or 2,000 items in that folder. And it's going to keep going until it opens every single folder in that particular Adobe folder. If I want to quickly close them up, I can hold the option key and I can close it and it will also collapse all those folders. Great if you're looking for something. If you lost something somewhere, hold the option key, open up a folder. It's pretty cool. Now also, option helps you with scrolling. So you know you can scroll like this. You can also click and it will kind of scroll down. But if you really want to do this fast, let's say you want to scroll all the way down to here, you would have to click a couple of times in order to get there. But if you just bring your mouse down here and you hold the option key and you click, boom, it goes right down there. So that's very helpful in scrolling around uh, and also opening up uh, nested folders. All right, let's go to the next one. So now we're up to uh, number 10, sound and brightness panes. So on your keyboard, you have uh, what do you call it, uh, sound buttons, and you also have brightness buttons. If you do an option key plus you put, you know, you hold the sound button down, you're going to automatically be able to open up the preferences for it. Okay, the same works for brightnesses. This is just a quick way of getting to those control panels when you need to. Also, if you go into the sound menu right here, and you hold the option key, you see that you're only getting, uh, you know, the scroll button uh, for making the sound louder and not. But if you hold the option key, you can switch between your input and output devices, which normally uh, most people didn't even know that that was in there, but it could be really helpful if you're switching between your headphones and your speakers and things like that. All right. So holding the option key and holding down the sound button gives you additional options. All right. Now, if we uh, hold down the option key on boot, all right? You can start up from a different disk. So if you're booting up your Mac and you're holding down the option key, you're going to get a window that looks like this. Obviously, you have to have an operating system on another drive for this to actually work. But Boot Camp is in here, let's say, and a backup. And you would simply click on whichever hard drive it is that you want to boot off of. Holding down the option key brings up this menu. And whatever this little arrow is under is the one that you're going to boot off of. Clicking on, for example, Boot Camp would bring that arrow over here. And that would allow you to boot off of that other disk. So that's what the option key can do as far as booting. Uh, from different disks. Okay, we're up to number 13. Option delete the word before it and afterwards. Okay, so if you um, put your cursor in any of the word programs and you click option and the delete key, which is here, it will actually delete the entire word before it. So if you continue to do that, let's do that again, option delete twice, you're also going to get those um, words one at a time deleted. If you again click before the four here and you click option but you use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can actually move the cursor along it back and forth as you could see and up and down even. Okay, so let's fix that. That's actually speakable items. Speakable. Um, so the next thing that you can also do is the option and the escape key. If you click the option and the escape key, 
that brings up speakable items that will speak whatever text file you're in. But you do have to have speakable items on in order for that to work. But you could try that out. That's the option and the escape key. Option delete before a word will delete it. Option with the arrows will select it. Um, and if you do option, let's see, if we do option shift, it will select it. So here I'm selecting items by holding the option, the shift key, and using the arrow. All right, great ways of using it in word processing programs. Option command space is a really good one also uh, because it can search your computer. So if you need to find something on your computer, you click option command and space. Easy because all three keys are together and it will bring you up right to the search area and you can search what you're looking for on your Mac. All right. And last but not least is your option click on the desktop. Uh, this actually gets confused a lot by people because they think if they option click, they're making an alias. But if you hold the option key and you click and drag a file on your desktop, it will make a complete new copy. And as you can see, this copy has a two before it and this one has a three because it's a full copy. It's not an alias. If I actually delete this one, uh, which was the original, you'll see that this is a full working copy of the original. So there you go. The top 15 option key tips for Mac OS X. Hope you like this video. If you have any more tips out there that I didn't write up about that you use on a daily basis or a weekly basis, add them to the comment section. We'd all love to hear about them. And thanks for listening. And if you like the video, like it, and please subscribe to my channel for more Mac tips. Thanks for listening.